When I was growing up, I was taught it was important to be humble. Don't ever get too big for your britches, my dad used to say. This meant don't think too much of yourself. Don't get above your station in life. Unfortunately, my station as a woman was deeply unappealing to me. But humility was a virtue embodied in the person of Jesus, who valued all others above himself. The Bible says he made himself nothing and became obedient to death. It's taken me a long time to shake off this conditioning, that I should aim to think so little of myself that I would believe I had no value, and that to believe myself deeply unworthy of God's love was somehow the highest spiritual aspiration. To feel deeply unworthy was in fact the only way to receive God's love. When I entered recovery for addiction, one of the biggest stumbling blocks for me was its encouragement toward this sort of humility. Don't trust yourself, the 12 steps seem to say. Trust God instead. And God was often known in recovery circles as Gus, the guy upstairs. And I'm telling you, I didn't want to trust Gus. I wanted to learn how to trust myself through an experience of love with my higher power. And my higher power wasn't Gus. It wasn't the guy upstairs. It was something else, something much less easy to define. Then I read the book, Many Roads, One Journey by Charlotte Castle. In it, she outlines 16 steps, what she calls the 16 steps of discovery and empowerment. And this model challenges the idea that humility is the highest spiritual virtue. Castle instead encourages self-empowerment and reframes codependency as not an addiction to security, but as internalized oppression. Just think about that for a moment. Codependency, the buzzword we've heard for years in self-help groups, is actually internalized oppression. Castle's fourth step says, we examine our beliefs, addictions, and dependent behavior in the context of living in a hierarchical, patriarchal culture. You can hear her begin to release us from self-blame. We aren't independent organisms. We are part of a larger system. But my favorite step of the 16 is step 10. We learn to trust our reality and daily affirm that we see what we see, we know what we know, and we feel what we feel. Just saying those words aloud feels deeply healing to me. But here's where it gets tricky. Castle addresses patriarchy, but she doesn't talk about race. And as a cisgender white woman, there are places I am oppressed and places where I am the oppressor. Adrienne Marie Brown recently wrote about this in her book, Emergent Strategy. She writes, where we are born into privilege, we are charged with dismantling any myth of supremacy. Where we are born into struggle, we are charged with claiming our dignity, joy, and liberation. For me as a woman, in order to heal, I need to disregard humility. I need to disregard the idea that the guy upstairs knows what's better for me than I do. I need to learn to trust myself, the holy within myself. But as a white woman, I need to stay quiet and recognize that I can easily believe I am the guy upstairs thinking I know better. The places I have been socialized to be the oppressor are the places I need to cultivate humility. Activist Ali Henney recently wrote that when white people experience white fragility, when they feel reactive and defensive on the topic of race, they need to instead lean into white humility. In those moments, we can let go of the need to be right and instead embrace being wrong. And as Kendrick Lamar says, get humble and sit down. Where I am born into struggle, I need to reclaim my dignity. Where I am born into privilege, I need to get humble. Are there places in your life where you need to reclaim your dignity? Where you need to learn to trust yourself? And are there places where you need to get humble and sit down? 
This sort of self-examination and honesty takes time and repetition, asking and investigating over and over again. But I'm grateful to those activists and wise ones, like Adrian Marie Brown and Allie Henney, whose liberation is bound up with mine. The more I allow myself to get humble, the more I allow space for others to be liberated, and the more I allow myself to be liberated in those places where I am oppressed, the more others are liberated. This is the beauty of the interdependent web. Both humility and dignity, when they are a response to the truth, result in more liberation for all. May you have the courage to investigate where those places are you need to learn to trust yourself and insist on dignity. And where those places are, you need to get humble and sit down. And may we all be liberated. May all beings be free from suffering and the cause of suffering. Amen and blessed be.